And we're back to learning GIMP and this time I'm going to show you how to create a realistic shadow. I'm going to use a simple shape, a can. First step is to copy it, so I've got the original as a backup. And then we need to create an outline. This method works on basically any shape, but the selection becomes harder when you use a more complex one. But for this tutorial it should be sufficient to use this can. First step, as always, when you create outlines or these selections, you just left click. I like to use the path tool and go over the basic shape. And when I've reached the starting point, I will control, left click on the original anchor point, and now it's closed. Then I zoom in, I may reposition these anchor points. And when you want to create a curve, just hover over the line, left click, drag. You've got the handles to adjust the angle if you need to. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I think my selection is fine for this tutorial. When you've got your selection, just right click and then use Select from Path. Afterwards, go to Select Invert and then press the Delete key. It's going to get rid of the background. I've got the original in the background active, so it looks like nothing has happened. But if I make this invisible, you can see it now. So our can is on this original copy layer. I go to Select None. Activate the Move tool. And as I've said, selection isn't perfect, but for this zoom level it's totally fine. The next step is we'll create a new layer. It's important that it's transparent, and I simply call that Shadow. Now we right click on our can layer, so the original copy, and add alpha to selection. So this is what we've got selected here. And then you can fill it with your foreground color. I've got black active, and it should be black for our shadow. You press Ctrl Z. Sometimes it makes sense to use sharpen before you add your foreground color. So when you have a more complex shape, you may want to use that. For the scan, it's fine not to use it. And we can proceed. I'll make the cam visible again, it's in the background, and on top is my shadow. I add a Gaussian Blur to my shadow layer. Check the preview first. You don't want to go too far up, but around 5 to 10 should be fine as a value, and then just confirm it. Next step is to give it a perspective. Let's use the 3D transform tool. It has three modes up here. The first one is move, and there's a camera mode. You can readjust this, and you could call it a center point, and you can adjust the angle. Then left click, drag, or use the slider here and the arrows. And there is also this angle mode where you have three dimensions x, y, z, and you can also left click, drag. I like to use the sliders and then I switch back and forth between the modes. I want to use the move mode to put it at the top of the can and the other ones is for adjusting the angle.
Let me use maybe something like this. And I confirm via transform. Now I'll put it one step below my original copy layer. This was our can. Then right click on your shadow, add a layer mask, make it fully white. We are on the layer mask, so not the layer, this is important. We use the gradient tool, we use foreground to transparent, foreground is black in my case. And it's a linear one, which should be by default the shape of a gradient in the menu on the left. Then left click drag, adjust the angle, and there's a slider and sensor that allows you to adjust it. You want to have it feathering out at the top. So maybe something like this. Next step is I right click on this layer and I apply the layer mask. So this merges the layer and the layer mask. Then I go to filters, blur and use focus blur. I'll adjust it right here, not using the menu. Instead, I click on these anchor points, left click, drag, and that way you can adjust it. And if I've got the right position, you can see what happens to the blur radius if we use it now. So this is going to make it vanish at the top. In this case, maybe a value like 20, 25 should be fine. Or maybe I even go up to 30 and I confirm. And that's basically it. Let me show you what happens if I change the background color. And that's how you can create a realistic shadow in GIMP. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.